Hello everyone. My name is Paul Duckworth and I'm with the Dynamics 365 Industrials team at RSM. I've been implementing business applications for most of my career and I've been with RSM for the past 10 years. I've always had an interest in sustainability in general and I'm very excited that there are now tools available in the marketplace that will assist the mid-market in managing their ESG goals. Today I'm going to give a brief introduction to some topics that are becoming more and more top of mind to the mid-market specifically ESG and sustainability. Once you're a bit more familiar with these terms and have an understanding of why they're important to you, I'll provide a brief demonstration of the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability, which is in preview right now. The first term to review is ESG, which stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. This originated in 2005 in a study from the World Bank, and it centers around financial risks and returns. ESG investing is based upon the assumption that ESG factors have financial relevance. ESG acts like a corporate social credit score, which is very important to investors and consumers. Investors who consider it important to incorporate their values and concerns in their investments and consumers who more often than not will purchase a product or a service that is sustainable versus one that's not. ESG is the start of something that is more data driven as opposed to the potentially false claims that have been made in the past. The tool I'm going to demo today focuses mostly on the E, or the environmental part of the acronym. The other term to define is sustainability. There's many definitions, but in its broadest sense, sustainability refers to the ability of something to maintain or sustain itself over time. Another way to put it is, what individuals and companies do today will affect what they might be able to do in the future. Now that we've defined sustainability, let's discuss why it's important. Simply put, it's good for business. Consumers prefer to do business with companies that practice sustainability, but it goes deeper than that. One third of consumers will pay a premium for sustainable products. Over 60% of consumers take into account if their purchase is from a sustainable company or not. For instance, Apple has committed to becoming 100% carbon neutral for its products and its supply chain by 2030. Companies that embed sustainability into their business models and corporate governance can have a lasting competitive advantage over those that don't. Companies that look at new ways to save money and become more sustainable will continue to innovate and achieve that goal. Another reason this is important is brand value. As mentioned before, consumers prefer to do business with companies that practice sustainability. Almost 70% of consumers in the U.S. and Canada think that it's important to them that a brand is sustainable. Millennials, who are now the largest generation in the U.S., are much more likely to have this thinking than baby boomers or Gen X. Another term I want to mention real quick is greenwashing. This is primarily a marketing ploy where companies try to make it appear they're sustainable when they're really not. For a bit of history, for those of you who travel, you may recall the hotel chain's Save Your Towel initiatives that were very prevalent for a while. These were something that a lot of chains positioned as having their hotel guests do their part in conserving water, being more sustainable, and helping save the planet. In reality, this only cut down on the hotel's labor expenses and did little in reducing the amount of water that was being used. British Petroleum actually marketed themselves as Beyond Petroleum for a while. Green Clorox bleach was actually a thing for a while as well. Why? Well, it made them seem more environmentally conscious than they actually were. Why am I mentioning this at all? Well, it works. People want to do business with companies that are sustainable. As early as 2015, it was found that shoppers would pay more for eco-friendly goods and want to do business with sustainable brands. People want to do business with companies that are actually sustainable, not the ones that say they are. ESG and its scoring is the start of something that is more data-driven as opposed to the greenwashing claims that are confusing people today in the marketplace. One last term to review is the greenhouse gas protocol. This is something that the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability relies heavily on. According to the Greenhouse Gas Protocol corporate standard, a company's emissions are classified into three scopes. Scopes one and two are mandatory, whereas scope three is voluntary, but it's also the hardest to monitor. However, companies that succeed in reporting all three of these scopes will have a sustainable competitive advantage over those that don't. Scope 1 emissions are those that are categorized as emissions that are released as a direct result of activities at a firm level. Scopes 2, those are indirect emissions, something like purchased heat and cooling. Scope 3 are indirect emissions that are up and downstream of the company's activities. For instance, business travel, employee commuting, and those types of things. 
The Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability is a new app that provides organizations a real-time view into their environmental footprint. It does this by providing your company visibility into the total emissions by centralizing data in one application. It also enables companies to set industry-aligned sustainability targets along with actionable insights to achieve their reduction strategies. The process of developing a greenhouse gas inventory has four key steps. First, review your accounting standards and methods and decide what data you're going to track. Second, begin to collect your data and quantify your greenhouse gas emissions. Third, define your plan to formalize this collection. And last, set your targets, track and report your progress. Okay, let's take a look at the Cloud for Sustainability, which is now in preview. This is built within the Microsoft stack, which contains a set of business applications and tools that are designed to work together. Part of the stack is Dynamics 365, also known as D365, which is a platform that spans across other cloud apps like Power Apps, Power BI, Flow, along with Office 365 and those types of things. Some of the major components here in D365 are customer engagement and a couple ERP solutions, finance, supply chain, and business central. More recently, Microsoft has made available some industry-specific clouds like the healthcare cloud, finance cloud, manufacturing cloud, and this, the cloud for sustainability. The Cloud for Sustainability Preview is based upon the Customer Engagement Platform, which has existing modules such as D365 Sales, Customer Service, Marketing, and Field Service. Let's start getting into the application by looking at some dashboards. I like to start projects and demonstrations with dashboards because it's an area where you look at the end in mind, meaning that what are those data points? What are the trends? What are the visualizations? What are the outstanding activities that you'd like to see in one central location? preferably at a glance. D365 has a really good uh, capability with dashboarding, but you can also embed Power BI dashboards into the system that gives you more functionality. The one we're looking at right here is a Power BI dashboard. You'll note up here we can do some filtering based upon uh, reporting year, accounting method, and scope. So I'm not gonna go into every tile here. You guys can see what it looks like and such, but there are gonna be a couple things I'd like to point out. So if we look here, for instance, Everything in this dashboard is based upon metric tons of uh, CO2 equivalent. So this is just, again, what the dashboard's built off of. This can be updated if needed. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and point out something that I really think is a nice little feature here in data exploration. You can actually take some data points here and just blow them out and get some uh, really interesting uh, tidbits of uh, information here. So we can say I want to see my total emissions by scope. And then from the scope, we can expand a little bit further and say, let's drill down to, say, emission source. And then from there, again, go one step further and say, I want to see it by country. So just a nice little way to look at your data to get some insights about trends and such. Something else that's really uh, interesting in this version is this area down here. This is the beginnings of uh, Microsoft AI embedded inside of D365 CE. So this doesn't have much data on it uh, in the system as of yet, so these are fairly rudimentary, but the more data we put into it, the more trending that we'll be able to see in the system. So for instance here, an emission source, so if it's a capital goods, we note that the tendency is for our average of emissions to go up 131.2%. Scroll back up to the top, and then we'll take a look at another dashboard, that's the analysis area. The analysis area is another Power BI dashboard. Again, I'm not going to go into every tile, but this one offers up some more information from a trending perspective. So if I scroll down here a little bit, uh, you'll notice there's a emissions by source and then by scope, and then we can also do emissions by facility as well as scope, and down here at the bottom, some more of that trending information that I'd mentioned. Let's go back up to the top here, and I'll just uh, flip over to scope one, and this is actually another Power BI report here. Um, something I want to point out, and again, not going into every tile here, but all the data that we have, which we'll get into in a little bit, is uh, can be broken down into the actual uh, gases that are available. So, you know, how much CO2 is actually causing this? What's the, the PFCs and such like that? So another a little bit of analysis that you can have that actually shows you where most of your emissions are coming from. Another area here down with some uh, some more insights and everything that are available. So again, a pretty interesting little dashboard from here. Now that we have a brief understanding of the potential outputs, the Power BI dashboards that help us visualize data, offer up analysis and trends, 
let's spend some time on how the underlying data is gathered and calculated. To start, let's go over here to greenhouse gases. And at the greenhouse gas area, you'll note here that CO2 is a GWP of 1. GWP is global warming potential, and CO2 is the baseline. So for instance, you'll notice here that methane, CH4, is 25, 25 times as potent as CO2. For those of you that are interested, there's actually a gas by the name of sulfur hexafluoride, which is 22,800 times as potent as CO2. Let's now talk about emission factors. We'll navigate over to emission factors. These are emission factor libraries. There's a demo one here we're not going to really spend any time with. And there's the EPA library. You can have as many libraries as you would like. Europe has a lot of libraries, for instance. We can make our own custom ones or add to what's there already. I'm going to open up the EPA library, and we're going to jump over to what are called emission factors. So a lot of times you're not going to know what your emissions are. So you're not going to know if you travel from point A to point B with a company truck that you've put out X amount of CO2 or something like that. In the same regards, if you purchase electricity from a U.S. e-grid, you're not going to know what the actual emissions are from there. But what you will know is how many megawatts, for instance, you've purchased. So we're going to open up this one right here, Circ Midwest, and take a quick look at it. And what this is basically saying is for every megawatt that we purchase, we're responsible for 1,584 uh, pounds of CO2, so much methane, so much nitrous oxide, and such like that. So again, the system will take this business activity, in this instance, purchasing electricity from a local grid, and translate that into your emissions in there. Another piece of the puzzle are models. I'm going to jump over here to models. And we're going to take a look here at purchased electricity. This is where we actually have the calculation rules set up. So we can see here in our previous example with the emission factors, this is going to utilize the CERC Midwest emission factor that we had. The cal calculation here is just simply the quantity times the unit. This is the quantity times the kilowatt hour that we looked at before. You can have as many calculations as you would like, as many different uh, emission factors as you would like. But again, this is the math part of it, the calculations that actually translates those business activities into actual emissions. After models, we want to take a quick look at how the data gets into the system to be processed so that we can generate the reports and visualize the data with Power BI. So let me go ahead and navigate over to connections here. The data can get into the system a couple different ways. We can manually create an emissions record or an activity record. We can import them via an Excel flat file, or we can create a connection. The connections here, and we'll go into this one in a minute, but I just want to show you creating a new connection just to give you the idea of all the things that we can do. We can have either activity data, reference data that we're not really going to go into uh, in this demo, and pre-calculated emissions. Pre-calculated emissions would be those ones that we do know the specific gas content of our activities. Activity data is when we don't. So for instance, going back to what we had before, um, if we use purchased electricity on this one, we can connect via Excel, via CSV, OData, and such like that. So as long as we can connect to another system, we can physically make that connection. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this here because this takes a little while to hook up and such, but I'll just show you from uh, the one that I already have here that already has a connection. We can see the data available in the flat file on my OneDrive. So again, this is just column by column, pretty straightforward in this regards. But what we'll do is go to that next step and I can walk through it a little bit. For right now, it's just an exact name match. If it's got the source and the uh, destination area, it maps. If it doesn't have an exact match, it doesn't map. I'm assuming in later iterations, we'll be able to map this field by field. Um, go to the next one here. We can schedule the uh, data refresh, and then we can save it at that point and be ready to go. So once we have this data connection, as it says here, if we want to make this uh, automatic, we can put this on certain dates to say, I want to check every blank on here for new data. Uh, and we can also remove our previous data that was there uh, because maybe it's an update versus something that's new. We want to make sure that we have that flexibility of doing the same there. I'm going to go ahead and save this and get back to the connection area. And as I mentioned, you can have as many data connections as you would like. 
the last piece of the puzzle are calculation profiles. So we're going to navigate over here to profiles and we're going to take a look at one that we've been dealing with from a data perspective. We're going to look at the purchased electricity default profile. This is what brings everything together like I'd mentioned. We're going to go ahead and edit this one so we can take a look at it. And it has the emission source that we're going to process and it also has the calculation model that we built uh, that uh, has all the calculations involved with it. Uh, we can have some filtering capability here too. Is it renewable? No. Uh, we want to make sure that the name is something. We want to maybe exclude a facility or an organizational unit, what have you. We can do all those things uh, with this filtering uh, capability here. I'm going to go ahead and hit next so we can actually see a preview of the data. This takes a second to load. And the first uh, record that I came across from Purchased Energy was this one here, and it says this is the consumption, and from this consumption, after it actually processes it, this is what's going to be the, uh, the end result from the emissions perspective. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save, and then Done, and we have our calculation profile. And then to run it, so what you would do is after a certain period of time, normally a quarter or a month or something to that regard, you're going to have all your data collected and you want to have that monthly run or the quarterly run that's going to bring everything together and publish so we can see it on our dashboards. So literally, you would highlight the area, which I already have done, and you hit the run a calculation. And there are several statuses that happen uh, when you're running the calculations. It's executing at this point. And after about a minute, you'll notice that this calculation profile run is uh, complete as it reads succeeded here. I hope you found this brief introduction to the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability informative. This is a great new business app that will be available later this year, and it provides the functionality for the middle market to execute on their emissions tracking and reporting strategies. RSM will be offering up additional looks into the sustainability cloud once it opens up a bit more and is closer to release. Thanks for watching this video and look for our upcoming deeper dives into the industry clouds that Microsoft is releasing to meet your mid-market needs.